So good morning everyone and welcome to um, Discover Creative Careers at ARU. My name is Sarah Jones. Um, part of my role at ARU is helping uh, students make the right choices for their courses and also for their careers. Um, I'd like to introduce James Ward, who's the head of uh, Cambridge School of Creative Industries, and he's going to chat to us today um, about creative careers. So over to you, James. Great. Does that, everyone see that? It's perfect. So um, hi, everyone. Welcome to ARU Remotely. Um, hopefully you get a chance at some point to come and see us in the physical world. But Sarah said, I'm James Ward and I'm head of school for Cambridge School of Creative Industries. We've got two creative schools in the faculty, which I'll give you a brief overview as we go through. Um, but the main emphasis on this presentation is to talk about the employability in the creative industries. Um, I've worked in the creative industries. Many of my colleagues have what well, most of my colleagues have who I work with here. And it's one of the probably the most exciting dynamic industries you can go into. So it's a really exciting stage of your education where you're at now. And then obviously, if you choose to go on to a degree, when you go on to a degree and beyond that, you can really see about what your life might potentially look like if you had a crystal ball. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to answer some of those things today. So why are you? Um, obviously, it's amazing because I work here, but we're one of the top 350 universities in the world. And we're um, for five years, we've been the top um, 40 of the UK. So we're a really well established, well known university, both here in the UK and internationally. Um, we're top 10 in the mainstream universities for graduate employment. So when our students come to us and when they do their, start their degree and finish their degree, they go off and do um, really exciting things in employment at the end. And also we're really diverse universities. So we have students represented from over 185 countries across the world. So you may be a local student or maybe further afield in a different country, but it's a great opportunity to make new friends, meet new people, and potentially get a few free holidays when we start to go on into the open world again. So um, we're quite a well-off university, which is very good, excuse me. And so um, we um, have invested huge amounts of money already in our buildings, and we're still investing in our buildings. So um, when you come to Cambridge, if you come on an open day, you'll start to see where we spent our facilities. And we spent a lot recently on our digitalization of our design and art courses, and also our motion capture spaces for our games and um, our new acting course and our film courses. So we're still spending, which is great for me because I can get a nice big checkbook um, from that. So we've worked with a design agency because um, some of you may know Cambridge, some of you may live in Cambridge, and Cambridge has got a certain image outside the world, which I'm sure a lot of you will know about. So we've rebranded Cambridge. So we've worked with an agency to come up with this film and our drama students have narrated it and it's got some of our students working as well. So I'm just going to play this film with you now. Welcome to our Cambridge. Welcome to the unseen side of the city, a place where the unusual, unconventional and unexpected its history and traditions have been long established. We're more about what's now and what's next. We're a community of creativity, of performance, thought, imagination, and expression. A place to see, meet, learn, discover, and challenge. To find purpose and make change. So thanks to the city. Thanks for the history that came before us. But we're sorry, past. It's future's turn. So I hope that's given you a little insight um, and you're all part of the creative future. So it's a very exciting time. So um, if you haven't been to Cambridge, um, hopefully that small video has whetted your appetite. Um, but the Cambridge campus is where all of our faculty is based in HS HSS. And it's where all of our creative courses. Now we've got two creative school. Um, Cambridge School of Art, which my colleague Joe McCullen leads on, they cover the design and art programmes. And I'm not going to run through all the courses, but we look at interior design, illustration, graphics, fine art, fashion design, fashion communication and photography. Um, and then in, in my school, Creative Industry School, we have computing, um, visual effects. We also have acting, drama, creative writing, musical theatre, um, writing and film, writing and English literature. We also have a very big area of music in sense of music performance, technology and production. And then also within film. So we have film and media communication, which is more sort of studies type courses, which is about and they do sort of making production. Then we have a specific film production and specific TV production, which is pretty much 
majority making, particularly in film production. And then media production is a new course which covers lots of different areas. So if you're a kind of quite haven't decided what you're going to be in, in the media world, the media production is a good course for that if you're not quite ready. Also, all of our undergraduate courses in both the art school and the creative industry school all have a placement year option. So that means you can study with us effectively for four years. At the end of your second year, you go out and work in industry for a year in a number of placements for that year. And then you come back and do your third year effectively in your fourth year with us. So you can apply for two routes. And if you are um, a non-visa student, you can change your mind. So you could apply, come on the four-year option and switch to the three-year option, or vice versa, you could be on the three-year version and switch to the four. So um, if you want to know more about that, colleagues here will be very much happy to talk you through that process, but it's a great opportunity. Mm. We've also got some postgraduate courses in film, games and writing and publishing, and also in drama and music therapy. Some of our students will do three years of study, and then go off into the industry or some will decide to stay and do a postgraduate with us. Um, so we're more than happy again to have you here. As long as you want to be with us, we'll support you with that. So that's enough about me and ARU. Um, I'm sure you're here really to hear about the exciting world of the creative industries. Um, so what's really exciting about the creative industries is that actually the UK is really the world leader in these subject areas. And we recruit, as you saw from that original slide, lots of students internationally come to us in the UK to study the creative industries. And also within the UK, it's one of our biggest area of our economy. So the creative industries are increasing three times faster than any other sector. So as we're coming out of this sort of recession period during the pandemic, the creative industry is really at the forefront of a recovery economy. One in 11 UK jobs are now um, creative related. So that might not be directly a graphic designer or a fashion designer, but they might be publishing, printing, they could be social media, There's lots of different areas. So that's 3.2 million jobs and rising are based within the creative economy. About um, one in 18 UK business have a connection with the creative industries. So they will have some type of connection, whether it's accountancy, so you have if you want to be an amazing accountant and be a film production accountant, you're going to get loads of money. So that means you'll be an accountant, but you'll work for the film industry, for instance. So that's a broader one in 18, so it's even um, bigger that way. And really the other thing is that some creatives who do a creative degree course will go off and do a creative degree. Um, from a creative to creative employment, others will go into non-creative businesses. And that's really because the way we think, the way we talk, the way we evaluate, and the way we critically evaluate everything we do, and is really transferable to non-creative business. So interestingly, a lot of people who work in human resources have got a creative degree. So they're very good at people, they're very good at understanding complex situations, and they're very good at resolving conflict, which is very good, which is probably why they're in HR. So let's talk a little bit about some of those skills and then we can start to see where some of these skills might resonate with you. Some of you might think, oh, actually there's something I need to improve upon and learn upon. So um, the World Economic Forum is the guru for telling us what the world is gonna look like. So every five years, they reproduce or produce, I should say, a list of the top 10 skills which businesses need to support the economy. So we've got a list here from 2015, a list from 2020. The next list will be 2025, so they'll start to work on that. The top of both, what hasn't changed across those five years is complex problem solving. And really, that's what we do in creative subjects. You know now whether you're devising a piece of dance, whether you're creating a film, whether you're working a piece of copy for graphic design, you're continuously solving problems. Everything is like you get given a brief by your tutors and you think, how on earth am I going to interpret that? So you have to break down, do your research, then you go through your development of ideas, you really break and explore those. That's why your teachers talk to you so much about the development of ideas, because that's the biggest thing. So complex problem solving is natural to you all. Then you can see in 2020, the new number for number two is critical thinking. And again, that really reflects upon that complex problem solving. So you're looking at, um, actually evaluating, thinking about your client in mind, your audience, your user group, you're cl critically evaluating your work, probably more than others. If you're a historian, you're perhaps not reflecting about what you're writing as much, but when you're doing a creative, you're revaluating that in the widest context, in other people's context, and you're working very much as a team. And then from number 10, I should do the top 10 charts. From number 10 to number three, we have creativity. 
So again, that's really exciting. So actually it's jumped in five years to the third top skill in 2020. And it wouldn't surprise me if it's number two or number one in 2025. And that's, as I said earlier about, for instance, HR, with creatives working in HR, because we can think creatively and we answer problem solving. So a lot of you, potentially some of your briefs will have a bigger problem. So it might be what they call, I hate this expression, wicked problem, which is a world leading issue like global warming or poverty, um, a lot of you love projects like that and a lot of you will be working on projects now in your school or college and that's something you'll carry on so that creativity into really understanding that and then people management has dropped from three to four but actually as a, as a creative you'll work in a team so you'll have to work with other people so that's why that people management is really critical um, and then number five coordinating with others so actually those top five skills all of you are doing now and that's really exciting to think of that when you come to finish your course now, go on to do a degree, go into employment, all of those top five skills, you are actually now working upon improving and building upon. So it's a really exciting time. So when your teaching staff say, you need to work, you need to critically evaluate your work, that is why, and that's what makes you very employable. So also creativity is very much in demand. So um, I'm sure you all know about LinkedIn. So LinkedIn, obviously most people advertise their jobs and some really exciting ways people did it. Actually one of our students in the art school um, made this animation about how she'd applied for all of these jobs and she wasn't getting a response. And then an agency saw it when she sent it through to them and gave her a job and the agency promoted it on their LinkedIn program. So we've got this amazing member of staff who's joining us from ARU. This is what she produced and it was really exciting. So again, she thought about things in a creative way about getting noticed and got that job. So LinkedIn have found that creativity as a word, when they've done the algorithms and gone through all those, is in the top 10 most in demand skills. So again, we're talking about those skills across different levels. Creativity is really in demand. So when the LinkedIn jobs go up, one in 10 um, are all have creativity within them, so that's really good. So creativity brings, as you said before, brings new solutions for difficult problems. You find new opportunities, you're thinkers, you ask questions, you, you question and you're questioned all the time about your work. You have a broader outlook on life and a really good approach, and you're really enthusiastic to learn. I always say that creativity, you don't ever switch off. <clears throat> excuse me, you don't ever switch off. So when you're watching um, Netflix or something, you're thinking, oh, actually, that, how does that relate to my work? You go to an exhibition, whereas I'm not sure accountants think about numbers all the time when they're doing their personal life. So it's something which is continuously evolving, continuously within your mindset. So they're skills for life, not skills for jobs, um, not jobs for life. So you'll see the world keeps changing. There's lots of jobs which are coming up which haven't even been invented. So we have to be training you and educating you to enable you to be flexible and think and apply your skills in a very different way to enable you to be employed for life. So often um, creators are very entrepreneurial, they're very technical, and they have a really good way of applying that creativity. Also, um, digital skills are really vital. So the industry is changing and technology is changing and platforms are coming in and um, software is being developed. Now, all of that's great when you teach that, but the abilities of the creativity come from your mind still, but you need the two. So you build your creative skills, but you also do that in conjunction with digital and technical abilities. So Nesta, which is um, a government sort of quango, which sort of, which sort of um, advises governments and sectors around where we're going, and um, they work with the Policy and Evidence Centre to come up with sort of this research which looks at a combination of technological, artistic, organisational and management are all very important for creative work. And that they common finds and studies of future work that employers increasingly demand digital skills and creative skills as a combination. So when you come to us, if you come to us on Open Day, you'll see how much we've invested. I was given, not personally, um, a quarter of a million pounds last week as announced to buy and update all of our post-production, buy some new cameras, which some of our cameras are 50,000 pounds. So that's all part of that investment, which ARU invests. And that's why um, when you leave us, you'll go out there to get a good job because you've got upstate skills in the sense of digital applications, but you've also got those creative mindsets to enable that to be exciting and applied in very interesting ways. So roles which are both creative and digital, some of you 
can be shouting at the screen now if you were in a virtual world in the real world i'd be asking you so um these are some of the, the jobs which actually also need digital skills and pretty much i would imagine all of you i'm not gonna go for the list will be doing one of these things at least one of these things if not more at the moment in your current courses or in your interest if you're not in a creative course so there's lots of lists there about what you're doing um and then the creative tech strongest ones, so you can see these here, see all the Adobe Creative Cloud's really important, um, but then video editing has become vital across so many different sectors, particularly when we look at social media and all that side, the boom and that. So lots of people actually do editing who aren't on film courses anymore because they're actually editing their own stuff and getting it out there. Um, so that's another list of stuff then. I'm sure you're checking off some of those which you're doing now as well. So, um, we're not really going to talk about robots, but the world is being run or increasingly run by robots, automization. So lots and lots of things have been automated, um, which weren't automated before. So gradually, um, people are going to start to be replaced by robots um, in their workplaces in particular. So we've seen that. Um, apparently, one of one of my colleagues told me in the, in the health sector now that um, when you have a hip replacement, it's actually done by a robot and actually the surgeons aren't doing it now. They're actually it's actually all automated and they're obviously the surgeon is overseeing it, but the machine is actually doing it for you. So that's a kind of thing. So of that, so you lot out there on the other screen. So 65 percent of you will be doing jobs which don't exist now, which is quite a frightening thought for someone old like me but also really exciting for you. So actually you're going to be think you're going to be going into a world which has ever changed. So when we go back to the start of my slides very earlier on, we were looking at um, those lists of skills and the top five for the World Economic Forum. That's why you need those because the jobs you'll be going into don't exist, a lot of them, so they'll be changing. And if we think back now, before social media, we would never have thought there was a, an influencer. One of my students has got, I think it's like 100,000 followers, um, and he does all this wild stuff. Now he's got an agent, he runs all that, but you would never have thought you'd have an agent for an in Instagram influencer, but they're out there. So there's lots of jobs out there which we don't know of, which will start to develop. And some of those very much around the sort of advocates around change. And we've noticed that lots of our students and I'm sure this applies to you, are really interested in um, making a difference in the world. So think about how you can solve problems and look at those. And these are some of the things which we haven't really thought about. So um, you might be an ethical technology advocate um, or you might be um, a human body parts designer, you know, we, because you think about people are 3D printing aspects of people's bodies and then giving them to them. Um, so there's lots of things but which you might start to think about, which you've got a creative interest in and that might start to fit a world problem or just be used in a very different way to what we know of now so it's very exciting so some of those things which don't exist and will exist and who knows what will be that list in five years time so um, creative jobs or jobs up an element of creativity are less likely to be automated so Nesta said that in 2018 and of 85 87 percent of highly creative workers are at at low or no risk of automation. So actually, of you sitting out there or standing out there, only 13% of the jobs you will go into, which we know now, will be automated in the creative industries. The other 80%, 87% will stay and be built upon and new ones will come in and really build that excitement. Um, and the UK actually is huge in the creative industries and we you know we hear creative britain and we have lots of international students who come to us for undergraduate and postgraduate study who want to stay in the uk and they can get a visa to stay on um, and work here and a lot of them want to get their skills to go back to their to their, their home countries and to support the economy there so there's big areas like south korea where fashion is really exploding and there's things like nigeria and africa have got big things called nollywood which is where the film is so lots of uk People have gone over to Nigeria to make and produce films, particularly who come from a Nigerian heritage, but also lots of Nigerian students have come over and are coming over to study here and take their skills back. So there's really that big significant influence where the UK is influencing the worldwide workforce. Um, however, 
you're all going to need a humanity in the sense we all need humans. So there's lots of you know now in the creative industry you still work as a team. So there's still a lot of human to human contact, whether that's online now or in the in the virtual world. So it's also part of that um, planning very much is within that. So let's talk about money. You all want to know about that. Um, so we should do big fanfare and fireworks. So creative workers are more qualified than their counterparts and they earn a lot more as well. So this sector, the creative sector, is what we call um, degree level sector. So the majority of the sector who work in creative industries have got a degree. Um, some haven't because it was before creative degrees existed, um, but most people have. So the majority of people will go do their current level three, level four course, which you'll be doing and come on to a degree. So a degree is what we call level four, five and six. Your A levels or your B techs, your diplomas are level three. And normally to go into creative industries, you go out at level five or level six or after a foundation degree or a full honours degree. Um, there are exceptions to that, um, but majority, there's not many creative apprenticeships out there at the moment. Um, it may grow, but majority of people, I say, will go through the education system into creative industries, as we discussed earlier, to build on those skills which we've talked about around um, research, um, narrative, idea, design, development, those kind of areas. Well, on average, your earnings um, from employees are one third higher than the UK average. So if you're one of those creatives at the same, educated to the same level of a degree, from the same social economic background, you will be earning a, a third higher than perhaps someone who studied geography, for instance. Um, so that gives you a good um, idea of what that money is. And quite often I talk to parents about this slide because they like that, because they're saying, I want my child to be a, an accountant. I say, robots and replace them, let them be a filmmaker. So, and they learn a lot more. So there we go. So you can tell your parents and carers that if they're trying to persuade you not to. So that's just another slide here, which illustrates that in a more visual way. Um, so this was a bit older, we need to update it. So this was from 2018 from the Design Council and they produced this really nice infographics showing the digital tech and the non-digital, particularly the growth gross difference there in salary, um, but it also gives you an idea of the, the wider firms and combining arts and science and things like that. So it's worth looking at now with those areas. So the added value to a degree course um, is, you know, is that actually um, you go off and go into the sector and lots of our students will be self-employed. So the creative industry, as I said, is a really high paid, high value economy but you're also self-employed a lot of the time. So a lot of the skills around working with people are really important because you're, if you know the expression, you're only as good as your last job. It's a small industry and small areas that people know you. So if you do really well, people say, oh, you know, we want you back. One of my ex-students used to work in the X Factor and when he did a placement there, they then got him back and they gave him a, a full-time job on the X Factor, which I know is gone now, um, because they really liked the way he worked. He was really got well, was very good at networking. Um, so yes, there's a lot around self-employment um, and you obviously a lot of earnings around that. Um, and your creative industry is about building a portfolio. So you often go from job to job and often you'll change jobs. So um, you might want, you might do animation and start to do become a character designer. And then you might go into animation and, or games and do costume design for character um, for characters and games and animation. So you might start to change that. You might work in one sector in graphic design right, the museum sector and specifically you might change to another sector. So you build a portfolio of skills and also one of my friends, um, she actually lives in Hollywood and she um, was a textile designer, strangely enough, and now she's a producer of animation films. So randomly these things happen. So again, she applied her skills in a different way. And it's just really to acknowledge that sort of modern economy in the sense of you going out into that world we need more and more of you so it's not a declining economy it's definitely an increasing economy so being your own boss as said so you're going to be a freelance you're going to be a business owner you're going to be an entrepreneur so there's some of the areas which you'll cover so some of you might just be a freelancer where you get employed on an individual level to work on a film or work on a design project as a specific as part of a team some of you might create your own business so lots of students are part of create their own film production companies and they start to employ people and lots pretty much everyone is an entrepreneur so you'll be thinking about how you can apply those skills and come up with different ways of working and creating new economies and new businesses as part of that um, area of interest 
So the interesting thing that a quarter of students currently plan or run their own business whilst at university. So we've got um, a very good ex-student of ours called Omkar, and he's been working with the university around entrepreneurship and how we're going to build all that more and more. So actually some students will be earning over £11,000 a year whilst working with us, doing freelance work, um, working in other jobs, creating new businesses. It's really exciting because they they have to study at the same time, but sometimes they might pull the two together. But that collectively is worth a billion to the economy, which is like amazing to think about actually that money coming in is actually from students working and creating their own businesses, which is really exciting. I'm sure some of you are, a lot of you have projects where at school and college, you work together to do that creative entrepreneurship and you run a business for a week and make lots of money in enterprises. So why should you go to university at all? Obviously, I'll be out of a job. So I'm a little bit biased, but as I said at the start of it, um, we are what we call in a level six employment sectors. The majority of our sector in the creative industries have got a degree. I'm not saying that's impossible not to get there a different way. It's it's not, but majority are within that. But really, you really broaden your wider horizons because you meet and think about and apply your skills in different ways. You're put into different situations. So you suddenly turn up with a suitcase, not quite literally outside a new university from where if you move away from home, you think, I've got to restart my life. You know, it's a it's a fresh start. I'm going to meet people I've never met before. I'm going to be in situations. I'll meet people from all over the world. Um, I'll meet employers. It's a really exciting to really broaden your horizons, but you improve your creative and crit critical thinking. So over the last two years or year, depending which year you're at in your creative um, level three course, you can think back to where you were in your GCSE and you will have changed massively for the better. So think about another what that would look like three years where you're just with us full time. Um, you have improved social and cultural awareness. So you get to meet lots of different people, lots of different backgrounds and build upon that. You really have an emotional intelligence which is broader and stronger because you become more independent. Often you move away from home. But if you don't, you have to suddenly be in this new situation where you meet all these new people and communicate and mix in a different way. And all of this sort of feeds your future potentials. So you really start to maximise that and move that on. Ongoing learning, you know, we reflect and you reflect on every creative project you do. You think, if I was to do that project again, what would I do? You obviously don't redo that project, um, but you think about how you then apply that knowledge to the next project you work on. And a degree is still a high value asset. So if you want to stay in the UK, go across Europe, go across anywhere in the world, having a degree means something. Um, it means you've, you've got a certain ability and intelligence and level to a certain point which employers recognise. So it's still very much a high valued qualification, no matter what you do um, in that employment. So this is our strap line to say, learn from yesterday, create for tomorrow. So I very much hope that all of you have learned something from me today. I'm going to be carrying on creating tomorrow. Um, we've got two online platforms which you can learn more about ARU and our creative output. So we've got Creative Showcase, which um, you can read stuff about me if you want on there, but it's got our staff, students work, some interesting things, lots about our facilities. And then we have a uh, annual online showcase where we have our students work. So that was present 2021, which was last year's cohort. So you can go on there and look at graphic design, fashion, film, animation games. <clears throat> so it'll be present 2022, which is another one. And if you want to come and meet me face to face, you can do so on Saturday 23rd of April, where we've got an open day. There'll be another one in June. So that's the latest one, so you can book them there. Or we've got open day on demand, where you can go in and look at any of my colleagues' course um, leaders have produced. They're ones who are interested in film, fashion, photography, whatever. You can go on and watch that any moment of the day or night. Um, you can do that. But thank you ever so much for your time. Hopefully, you're all still there in the virtual world. And I'm going to hand over now for any questions you might have in the chat, or if you want to put your camera on, ask me a question. I'm more than happy to do so. I, I shall stop sharing my screen um, so then I can see everyone and the questions. Thank you, James. James that really, really interesting. Really interesting. Um, do pop your questions in the chat if you have any for James. I'm so glad you mentioned accountants. Uh, being replaced by robots that's one of my favorite things to say as well um because one of the reasons that we we do this isn't it is to help people think differently about what the future might be like um and quite often we 
have had ISIS students who have choices and they have what they think is the safe option um, and then they have what is their passion which often is the creative side and actually it's about kind of trying to re-educate people that actually perhaps the safe options won't be that safe in the future um, so yeah I can't wait for the accountants to be replaced by robots. Well, it's, it's very too if you look at that QuickBooks I think it's called that's literally and my friends who are freelancers they just upload all of their expenses everything into that and they literally just send it across to accountant who does it for them so it's reduced their their payout a lot more but it's by a lot less because they're not paying for account to enter all their stuff into a book yeah. add it all up because their system algorithms do it all for them and in the future that will link i'm sure straight to um the government departments to enable that to happen without even anyone signing it off and i've maybe we've done that but i don't i'm a paye so i don't have to do that myself but it is it's that changing sector and i think it's really important to know and then part of it actually what We've been asked, it may not come off yet, but we've been asked our film students um, to film at Addenbrooke's. And what they're planning to do is that um, uh, the Lancelot, which is a medical magazine, a journal, um, they in, in Ukraine at the moment, there's um, doctors who aren't used to do emergency surgery. So they've asked our students, one of our postgraduate students is from Ukraine to translate. So we're potentially, it hasn't happened yet, we're potentially filming the doctors doing emergency operations which will then have the Ukrainian student voice up and then we'll be sending those across to Ukraine to help doctors perform those those operations in those in A&E in &E who aren't used to it. So there's a lot of, and you wouldn't think, I wouldn't have thought 10 years ago that film students would be helping to solve problems like that where doctors need that training. So there's lots of exciting opportunities where you can apply that skills to really help people in the wider context. So I think, you know, People think, oh, the creative industry is a bit frivolous, but actually that's an example which doesn't. And actually we've all lived through a pandemic where we were all watching stuff on platforms and getting from them. So that's really helped people's mental health and well-being by actually having access to resources like that. So you can create a business which would purely be a film production company for medical reasons, you know, and things like that. So there's lots of opportunities for you to use your skills in a in a in a better way to help society much broader. A lot of our students do that as well so um, there's lots of opportunities but there's so many jobs out there as I saying there's so many skills and so many related jobs and that's what I was saying um, we have a lot of students who are really interested in um, cyber security and um, IT and um, I was chatting on a, we have an applicant day where if you've been offered a place students can come in and meet the teaching staff we had that a couple of weeks ago and I was chatting to two mums um, who both their daughters were in the, our computer technology taster event. Um, and I was saying, oh my goodness, do you realise that having a daughter in tech who wants going to games, their hands are going to be bitten off because the gender balance is, in that, is very much towards the male in games. So the BFI support um, females in games and things like that. So you'll be earning more money by doing that in the games industry than out of that so there's a shortage of people in that sort of digital programming side of the, sort of the sector generally across the whole employment sector but in the games they'll pay you more to do it and you'll have a more fun life so sometimes you've got skills which you think oh actually i'm really good at it really good at that and actually you can apply them in a creative way earn mm -hmm. more money and it actually links to your hobbies and interests so um if any of you want to work in a fun environment these design studios, game studios, are fantastic. They provide you meals. They have um, drinks parties every Friday evening. If interesting, if you search jobs now, some areas, of, particular areas where there's under representation of people within that skill set. So particularly IT areas. If you look, if you search the jobs now, it will literally say you have every Friday of the month you get a. Uh, um, drinks and meals provided because people get spent all their money because it's the end of the month for their salary you get all these bonus things to make you enjoy your job because you work you do work quite long hours and it's it is hard work but actually they want you to enjoy them so the design spaces are really interesting so in Cambridge 30 percent of the games industry is based in Cambridge and um, their offices are just like a nightclub it's literally you come in there's like there's table football there's lots of really interesting things so if you do your work so actually I'm going to go and play table football for half an hour and you go off and do that and then go back to your desk and carry on so if you can get to visit some of the places look at them online and look at jobs it gives you really good insight to where what your career will look like and how fun it is it's hard work 
but it, it's been yeah, useful yeah. for them. It's interesting that I've done a lot of these things now, so I've um, met quite a few creators and talked to them about their experiences. And they all say that they work hard and they all say they absolutely love their job. And in some ways, that's why they work hard, because they love it. But I've never, ever met anyone who works in the creative industries who doesn't like their job, which is tells you something, doesn't it? Um, yeah. And it's interesting as well, James, because I was thinking about the fact that, um, you know, I was like, how can one in 11 jobs be in the creative industries? And then you, when you start thinking about everything that you do, probably more as a, as a young person in your daily life in terms of, you know, anything that you look at on your phone, anything that you listen to on your phone, anything that you watch, any games that you play, that, you know, anything that you read down to the clothes you're wearing, they're all products of the creative industries. And that's just the obvious thing. So then you become aware of, you know, how much we we do is connected to the creative industries and also I think your point about frivolity was really interesting because we all know that there's sort of you know conversations around you know arts degrees and arts funding and all the rest of it um but I read something in the Guardian once and it was from like a surgeon um and she sort of said like yes I, I save lives, but actually it's the kind of creative industries and arts and culture that make our lives worth living. It's where we you know, get our pleasure from on a daily basis, you know. Um, so I think that's kind of quite important as part of that picture, as well as actually the kind of world changing stuff that you were talking about, like our students potentially helping surgeons learn how to do surgery, which is, as Rachel said in the chat, you know, that is amazing. Yeah, and it's quite interesting because actually a few years ago, because our education has been removed from schools a lot. Um, one training hospital for surgeons introduced ceramics pottery classes because the hand coordination of surgeons, because they did at school playing with Lego, playing with ceramics, you know, doing all that stuff with your hands. They hadn't got that skill, they had to build that skills back up in non-creative people. So actually all those things which are creative in the school education or which were in the school education really help a lot of sectors and take them through. Um, but it is that mental health and well-being because how many people enjoy playing a game or watch films or go to a gallery? Um, all those things about which we've all missed going to the cinema over the last couple of years. There's also an interaction with strangers. You know, it's kind of all those things in that creative economy. So when that bar is open in the cinema, that's only open there because someone's gone to the cinema. So actually mm -hmm. those jobs are all connected yes. to the creative industry. Yeah. The cleaners who clean that cinema are cleaning it because people have gone in and dropped their popcorn. So, you know, so it's kind of all those things. When you, that's when you unpack the job market, yeah. it really is. And the great thing about, for instance, editing a post-production, we're third in the world. Um, London is third in the world after New York and LA. I can't remember which way New York and LA around. So if you want to go into the film industry, um, with literally every production house, every TV studio, every film studio is booked up for about five years. Um, mainly because a lot of Star Wars films have been here, but the James Bond films, and there's lots of Netflix being made here, lots of, again, I was talking to someone in the TV um, industry and she was saying what we need is lots of people um, who are writer performers, like, you know, I May Destroy You. That's again, it was produced, written and created by a writer performance. There's lots of people, so we do drama and writing, for instance. So you, we're trying to capture those sectors and the T, yeah. what is, this is why, if I was in a room with everyone out there, I'd say, what's TV? Because different people watch traditional television has gone in certain sense, but it's still called TV. So wherever you're watching the platform, whether it's YouTube, whether it's um, Netflix, Prime and all those things, it's actually we're calling it TV still. So there's lots of people, there's a shortage of writers for mm -hmm. dramas, there's a short explosion of um, things like Bridgerton has been really popular, so period. So there's a lot of stuff which needs creating. Um, and again, all those sectors will have a van which delivers something to them. So the delivery men will be bringing, or women will be bringing stuff to that set, which again is a, a sector related to the employment to the creative industry so that's when you start breaking it down you're thinking oh yeah it's actually it's huge you know so I think that's what's really exciting about it. Um, do you have any questions out there for, for James? I know he covered an awful lot in that presentation but if you've got any specific questions that you'd like him to answer please do pop them in the chat otherwise I think we'll stop to, to wrap the session up shortly. Um, it's interesting as well, James, because um, last year we had a um, presentation from Chris Cook, who works in VFX. Um, mm. He's kind of based in Canada, but does kind of quite a lot of work with the big film studios. 
Um, and he was saying they literally cannot get enough visual effects designers. And he did a presentation and he showed us that like practically everything you see on film now, more or less, is edited in visual effects in post-production. It was quite incredible. It's like he showed some footage of like um, Paddington on a train and then like all the scenery was put in afterwards, everything that was on the table, they'd like redo the whole kind of face of buildings if they didn't, you know, if they didn't want it to be Georgian anymore. I was absolutely astonished. I had no idea. I really thought that was a train with real scenery, you know, and he said they literally can't get enough visual effects designers, which is... Um, no, it's nice. amazing. And I will try and find a link. There's this film, um, from one of those, there's different sets of skills which represent, and the visual effects one, I've got this film where they show everything before and after. So they go to these amazing films and you see the shots before the visual effects artist has attacked it. And you're like, oh my yeah. goodness. And it's yeah. just really incredible to think how much. Um, and that, when they're sent, so we've got the visual effects course, which is starting this September. Also, for instance, um, our act, we've got new acting degree course. We've had drama and musical theatre for a long time, but our acting is for screen and computer games. Um, because the games industry is now bigger than the film industry, so it's the biggest creative sector in the world. So we need to train actors who can act for for, for games. So when <clears throat> excuse me, when you see a games character, there's been an actor who's acted out those scenes, and then someone's visually put the character on top of them. So we now need to train actors to act who become a monster effectively, or become a completely different person with their outfit and their body parts put on top of them, but you need that underlying acting skill. So that's why we're developing new courses like that specifically. So if you are an acting sort of drama student, then that's actually, that's one of the things, that's why we've created that new course for that. So it is, there is a lot of change which you don't know about, you know, as a yeah. normal student. And, and I think that's what's great about uh, your school, Cambridge School of Creative Industries, which, you know, it's only like five years old now or something. But that kind of cross collaboration, because I think the boundaries between the different like industries are kind of merging as well. So the fact that you have all those areas within your school and they can work across, I think is really great as well. Yeah, no, definitely. Definitely. Um, so uh, thank you very much for joining. Um, I will send around an email with a feedback form. If you wouldn't mind just leaving some feedback, it would be much appreciated. It only takes four minutes and it just enables us to be able to carry on doing these um sessions in future years which we hope you find really helpful and I've also just popped in there the booking link for other sessions so we have got one session this afternoon which is on music production and then um, which may be of interest to you and I think Chelmsford College booked onto that is um, computer games with Emily Pritchard so she'll talk about her experience in the computer games industry um, so thanks very much James and thank you all for joining us I uh, hope you enjoyed it um, thanks for your comment Heather in the chat and uh, yeah, we hope to see you again soon. Thanks, Thanks very much, everyone. Thank you.